This video will show you how to obtain, install, and use the BRP utility and diagnostic software, BUDS, on the Rotax Jet Propulsion System. These procedures are specific to the Rotax 4TEC 1503 series package and should be used as a general reference. Use this information in conjunction with the specific information contained in the Rotax Jet Propulsion System Service Manual. To use the BUDS diagnostic software, you will need a personal computer. The PC must be an IBM compatible type using one of the following Microsoft Windows operating systems. Windows 8, 7, XP, or Vista. The PC should have a Pentium 2 or higher processor, 512 megabytes of memory, and 100 megabytes of hard drive free space. Note. A battery-powered laptop is strongly recommended to avoid electric shock hazards. You will also need an MPI-2 interface card and an MPI-2 diagnostic cable. You can install the BUDS application on any computer, but you'll need a computer with access to the Internet to download the software. Note, BUDS also requires installation of the latest version of the Ixat VCI drivers for the MPI-2 interface card. Go to the Rotax Jet Propulsion webpage. When the page opens, scroll through the list and select the BUD software. Save the file to the computer desktop or another known location. Do not rename the file. Note, if the files are for a computer that does not have access to the internet, you can save the files on a USB memory device. After the download is complete, return to the engine software page. Scroll through the list and select the Ixat VCI drivers. Save the file to the computer desktop or another known location. Do not rename the file. Note, some computers may require administrator rights to install drivers or software. Contact your computer administrator if you encounter an installation error message regarding administrator rights or insufficient privileges. If the downloaded files have been saved on a USB memory device, move the EXE files to the computer desktop. Find on the computer desktop the VCI 3513826.exe file. Double click the file icon to start the installation. Note, at the time this video was made, the VCI version was 3513826. This number will change as newer versions become available. Read the overview on the VCI Setup welcome screen. Be sure to close any other open applications before continuing the installation. Click the Next button and follow the on-screen prompts to complete the installation. You must accept the licensing agreement. Do not change any folder locations. If a previous version of the VCI driver was installed, you will see an existing setup message. Click the Yes button to overwrite previous versions and continue. After the installation is complete, click the Finish button to restart the computer. After the computer has restarted, connect the MPI-2 interface card to an unused USB port and make sure the Windows operating system has detected the device. If the new hardware is not found, go to the Hardware Device Manager. Remove any existing Ixat VCI devices. Select the device and then right-click and select Uninstall. Then unplug the MPI-2 interface card. Reconnect the MPI-2 interface card and the Windows operating system should auto-detect the new driver and hardware. Double-click on the BUDS EXE file icon on the computer desktop to start the installation. From the drop-down menu, select the user language. Click the OK button to confirm the language selection. Read the overview on the BUDS setup welcome screen. Be sure to close any other open applications before continuing the installation. Click the Next button and follow the on-screen prompts to complete the installation. You must accept the licensing agreement. Do not change any folder locations. Enter your dealer name and number and then click the Next button. You may enter a username of your choice. Next, enter your first and last name. 
click the next button. Enter a password of your choice. Note, remember your password. You will need it every time you log into Buds. Confirm your password and then click the next button. After the installation is complete, click the finish button. The first time the Buds program is started, an access privileges screen will display. To access the Buds program, you must email the nine digit code displayed on the screen to authorizations.mps at brp.com. You will receive a reply from BRP which contains your 20 digit access code. You must type the access code into the allotted space. Make sure the cursor is positioned to the far left of the access code entry block. Click the add button to activate the program. Access is valid for one year and then you must request a renewal access code. First, connect the 6-pin connector of the MPI2 diagnostic cable to the MPI2 interface card. Next, connect the MPI2 diagnostic cable to the engine diagnostic port. Then connect the USB connector of the MPI2 interface card to the USB port on the PC. Then turn the key switch to the on position. Do not start the engine. These items must be completed before starting the BUDS program to allow proper communication between the engine ECM and the BUDS software. The MPI2 interface card includes two status lights that indicate the connection of the USB to the PC and the controller area network, or CAN, to the ECM. Both lights must be green for the MPI2 to function properly. BUDS is designed to allow electrical and electronic component monitoring activation of certain components for diagnostic purposes, and to change certain settings. Use the BUDS help file for more information of the use and functions of the BUDS software. Always use the latest BUDS version. Start the BUDS program and log on with the username and password you selected earlier. The status bar shows the proper KW2000 protocol and the number of modules it is communicating with, depending on the installation. Click the Read Data button. Via the CAN bus, BUDS will read the gauge cluster module if equipped and the ECM on the engine. On twin engine models, click the Port or Starboard button to choose the ECM you wish to communicate with. This will allow you to view the information or change settings from a specific ECM. Use the file menu to open or save MPEM files. BUDS allows you to read, write, edit, open, save, and print MPEM files. The MPEM files contain engine service information, which is collected when BUDS is connected to and communicating with an ECM. Demo MPEM files are available to help users learn the BUDS diagnostic software. You can also set up and print service reports. Select the pages to print, click the preview button to view on screen, or the print button to print the report. Use the MPI menu to view your MPI2 card identification when requesting an access code renewal, or to check your access expiration date or to enter a new access code. Use the module menu to view or update the ECM or cluster or to replace an ECM. Refer to the service manual for the procedure to update an ECM or information center cluster. Use the tools menu to add or remove technician users to access the BUDS program. Change the user language or measurement units or to update the BUDS database. Use the Help menu to view BUDS help topics or to view program version information. The Vehicle tab contains four frames of information. Identification. The VIN, this is the Hull Identification Number, or HIN, which should have been entered by the boat manufacturer when the engine was installed at the boat builder's factory. Engine, the engine serial number entered by BRP when the engine was assembled. Model the engine model number entered by BRP when the engine was assembled. Runtime, the total hours and minutes the engine has been run. Purchase, customer, the purchasing customer's name entered by the selling dealer. Delivery date, the date the boat is delivered to the customer entered by the selling dealer. 
Click the right data button to save a data or setting changes to the ECM. Note, a message box will confirm a successful operation. Last service done by records the identification number of the last MPI2 card which performed the reset service. Hours. The engine runtime in hours and minutes the service was completed. This information is automatically recorded anytime the reset service button is pressed. The settings tab may contain multiple sub tabs of information. The ECM tab allows the technician to reset the electronic throttle body. The cluster tab allows the technician to set the user language and select either imperial or metric units. The monitoring tab may contain multiple sub tabs of information. The ECM tab displays the current engine operating conditions. The cluster tab displays the engine operating conditions as displayed on the vehicle cluster. Use the displays on the activations tab to perform static tests on certain engine components or on the gauge cluster. The static tests allow the technician to confirm operation of selected components. The activations tab may contain multiple sub tabs of information. The ECM tab displays an overview of the engine, sensors, throttle body, fuel injectors, and ignition coils. Click on a blue component to read the current values the component is sending to the ECM. Click on a red component to activate a fuel injector or ignition coil. Click the fuel pump button to activate the fuel pump. The cluster tab displays an overview of the vehicle cluster. Click on an icon in the digital display to activate that function on the dash-mounted cluster. Click the WOW button to activate initialization feature of the cluster. The analog pointer of the gauges will move through their full range of travel, then return to their original position. The digital display will turn on and stay on. All indicator lights will turn on for three seconds and then turn off. Use the drop-down menu of the Faults tab to view All Faults, a complete list of service codes for Rotax products. Active Faults, faults which are now occurring. Active and occurred faults, faults which are now occurring and any faults which may have occurred in the past. When troubleshooting an issue that generates a fault code, select the fault, then click the More Details button. More details will provide you a list of possible causes as well as electrical circuit tests including expected voltage or resistance readings to aid in resolving the issue. Press the Close More Details button to return to the fault list. The History tab contains four information subtabs. The Last Minute tab displays the last minute of engine operating conditions. Use the drop-down menu to select the parameters to view. The Minimum Maximum tab displays the minimum and maximum values shown over the life of the vehicle. The Runtime tab displays the percentage of engine runtime in normal operation or in limp home mode. The RPM Profile tab displays the percentage of engine runtime the engine has run at various speeds. After completing diagnostic work, turn the key switch to the OFF position. Disconnect the MPI-2 diagnostic cable from the engine diagnostic port. Store the engine diagnostic connector in its protective cap.